so why does the board spin backside? In the previous video, we classified its symptoms into two types, varial flip type and backside flip type. We've also broken down possible elements that could cause the problem as follows. As a key element, we talked about the spurious relationship, a misleading relationship where a certain symptom is so likely to be affected by an apparent element, but in fact it is a third underlying element that really causes the problem. As a result, we've reached the following conclusions so far. Either the foot placement or the angle of shoulders doesn't spin the board. Corrections, they could be leading to actions that could cause the problem, but all by themselves, they don't. For example, placing the back foot in the pocket may cause your shoulders to open, which further may cause your body axis to lean to the toe side by shifting your weight to the toe side. And this weight distribution is the biggest cause of the spinning problem. By leaning to the toe side, even when you try to pop straight down, you will wind up swinging your back foot to the heel side, which eventually spins the board back side. And this time, we'll talk about the remaining elements, overpop and overflick. You are watching Why the Trick, and today we are going to study a trick scientifically. First of all, let's think about possible effects of overpop. So overpop quite literally is when you pop excessively hard. In the previous video, we learned doing this conveys too much energy to the tail, gives the nose too much amount of energy to go up, which cannot be offset by the slide of your front foot and eventually makes it difficult to flick out your front foot and the remaining energy of the nose to go up makes you feel heavy to flick, may cause slow flips, which further is leading to catching or landing upside down. But this is not the end of the story. I mean, where do you think the excess energy goes? Generally, the major portion of the energy is reduced by the slide of your front foot. But when you pop too hard, even after sliding your front foot all the way up the nose, the energy may still remain, and that energy does not just disappear all by itself. Instead, it needs to go somewhere. From this angle, you can see while the toe side of the nose can go up freely. The heel side, however, is blocked by your front foot. This is the reason why the board spins backside due to overpop. Let's verify it using this 3D simulator. Imagine this green axis is where your back foot pops, and the blue axis is where your front foot will be. And this is what happens when you overpop. As you can see, the board spins backside after hitting the front foot. This is because the only direction the energy of the nose can go is the toe side. To prevent this, you want to pop just as hard as it needs. In other words, your board needs to lose its momentum to go up by the time your front foot is ready to flick it. In general, I don't think it has to be so high. As I see it, if you don't know how to kickflip properly yet, you could just pop as hard as this. And to do this, you really want to understand the difference between jumping and popping. If you want to learn more about that, please check out the previous video that I explained what overpops are and how to pop properly, link in description. Next item is overflick. This is also quite self-explanatory, when you flick too hard. Let's see what happens when flicking according to the timeline. When you flick, your front foot goes to the side of your board. Usually, it should stop somewhere close to it. One thing I'd like you to pay attention to, as you flick out sideways, the board opens up. And after your front foot finishes the flicking motion, you have to bring it back on the deck. Important, since your body is not attached to anything, if you move your front foot, your back foot also moves correspondingly turning your whole body around your body axis like a gear. So in summary, the energy to open up your board as you flick it should be equal to the energy that you generate when you bring your front foot back on your deck. As a result, by the time of landing, your board should be directed to the same direction it was going before popping. However, when you overflick, you may extend your leg too far. Correspondingly, you need to generate much bigger energy to bring your front foot back on the deck. And if you push through and catch a board, your body continues turning after that. Let's compare a normal flick and an overflick. As you overflick, your front foot will be farther away from your board. And to bring it back, you need to move it for a longer distance, which generates more energy. 
With such energy, since you are in the air, your body keeps rotating even after catching your board. Once again, unlike a proper flick, your front foot is overly extended, which requires more energy to bring it back. As a result, you end up rotating backside. As for the spurious relationship, opening shoulders itself is not a direct cause of the problem, because it doesn't generate any energy to spin the board. Instead, by opening your shoulders, it becomes easier to extend your front foot unnecessarily far off to the side. And to bring your front foot back on the deck, you need more energy, which further makes it difficult to stop your body from turning backside. To avoid this, I recommend envisioning where you should stop flicking before flicking out. I still do this even today. In this case, for example, it should be somewhere around here. For someone like me who opens shoulders, I think it's always important to try not to extend his or her front foot beyond that point. Also, you might want to try this while getting off your board. Doing this helps you focus more by being able to land safely. Once again, if you want to learn it more in detail, please check out the previous video about overflick. You can find the link in description. It's been really long, but in conclusion, opening shoulders and placing your back foot in the pocket are not direct causes of the spinning problem. If you're looking for objective verification, please check out the previous video. Instead, doing so may cause wrong use of weight distribution, which causes the problem. In addition, strength of pop and flick is more important, especially the strength of flick may be caused by opening your shoulders. And it is just understandable that you want to flick as hard as possible to complete the flip by the time you land it, but that very effort could be the reason why you can't land it. So please take a moment and find the right strength of your flick. That's all for this episode. I used to have the same problems and took me really long to figure out what I was doing wrong. So I truly hope this can help someone. And if you can leave a comment or any kind of question, like or subscribe, I really appreciate it. I think I'll be talking about tray flips next time. So let's see you in the next video.